I'm trying to, yeah, okay. So I'm recording. I, should, if I go back to Kumo space, will I lose this? No, you're, you're just on a different tab. You should be okay. good. All right. This is Nikki's first time in the staging site. So that's what, oh. the rest of you, if you want to, while we're talking, get into the staging site, that would be great. Okay. Um, right. If you can, uh, David, that's really <laughs> multitasking. Um, uh, if, if you need, if you need to remind her what the password is, it's progress through technology. Those three are capitalized and staging is the username. Although your browser may have kept it somehow. You know, um, I'm changing my browser, so that's probably why it's going to take me a while. Okay. This is the worst password call ever. I didn't do it. I know. Progress, right. But it's too many letters and you can't. I know. Progress. At least they didn't put exclamation points. And... <laughs> Progress. I guess I could ask them to change it. But... I got it. Okay, cool. Right. Okay, so Nikki, um, would you start with a brief introduction? And um, yeah. Hi, Nikki Vane, Lehman College, City University of New York, um, working with a teacher residency program. And David, I mentioned to you in our last call that um, I'd be doing some work with um, a uh, uh, that this residency program. Yeah. And, and, and so it's great, Nikki's here. Great. Um, great. So David, you yes. are. <laughs> oh, um, I know Christina. I know Paul. Nikki, nice to meet you. Uh, I've worked in education for many years, and I've had the pleasure and the honor of working with a bunch of National Writing Project sites um, for, I hate to say it, going on close to 20 years now. Um, mostly it's been with education and technology, digital storytelling to some of the work the NWP did with its writing to the letters to the next president. And I've always been working with uh, literacy and uh, technology. And the Writing Project has been a wonderful model and collaborator over the years. And so with this immersion, this explosion of people's interest in AI, I'm in one of those folks. And so I reached out and got myself connected with the people in the NWP community who were exploring this. And Paul is the front of this, of course, as is Christina. And so I've been tagging along in these discussions. Cool, cool. Welcome, welcome. Christina. Hi, I'm Christina and, for the National Writing Project. And, and you're plus one too, sorry. Am I plus one? Plus one. <laughs> Um, I'm Jack Marmerstein. Uh, yeah, Christina's Chris is plus one, and, and uh, Paul's, sorry. Paul's greatest fan. These Paul days. Paul's greatest fan. I'm singing your praises, Paul. People are amazed when I whenever I show them. Yeah, you know, yeah, they're all reading Sylvia Plath again and and, and learning what reader response <laughs> theory is, and and uh, it, it's pretty amazing. That's cool. So let me let me say that I um, had a, a you know I. Bob Montgomery for many years now, um, they send some cash uh, from Westhead um, every year to license now comment um, and they use oh. now comment. Um, so um, I thought I, I had the sudden moment of, oh my God, um, I need to let Bob know what we're doing here. <laughs> so I, I called him up and, and he was so excited about um about you know some implementation they've been talking about it so he got five of his friends on and anyway so it was a really nice conversation they they asked me two really hard questions i'm going to ask the first one and ask you to start thinking about it which was like in the middle of my meandering through what we're doing he said hey paul uh what problem are you trying to solve and i'm like oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think Always it's a, a good problem. It is a good question, right? So I need yeah. you to help me know the answer to that question. Okay. The second question that um, um, actually uh, I won't <laughs> that somebody else on the call um, asked was about safety, right? Um, what are you going to do? The, the example he gave was, what are you going to do when a kid puts in a profile? You know, um, I'm abused. Um, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And that goes up into open AI. And then somebody goes in and says, uh, what's going on with this kid? And that comes back from open AI, right? I'm not sure that exactly how it happened, but it's okay. You know, that's worth yeah. thinking about. And then, yeah. and then it's like, and, and does, oh, does this open up um, all of your kids' um, email addresses and their information? To open AI. So we did some due diligence. David actually helped me do some of that. Where I am right now, I'll say, and I don't want to 
talk a lot more about that, but we can if we'd like. But um, it's it's at least interesting for for districts to be thinking about this stuff, right? Because if they go out and use the yeah. consumer version, what just got described there will happen and does happen. Like all the all the information that the kid uses when they log into that thing is is collected, and they use that information to train their. They they claim they only use some little part of the information to right. train their models from that point. Right? If I get this wrong, David, help me. But yeah, no, I mean, both. Oh, yeah, you're you're doing great. Keep going. No, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and but but then because we use an API, they do not have, and I checked this with Jeremy, our guy, um, our tech guy, and they do not have access to our kids. Um, anybody, any user, not just our kids, but we're mainly concerned with younger kids, right? And they don't have access to any of the user's information like that, email addresses, other stuff they put up on any information we hold, they don't have access to. The only information they have access to is what the kid puts in the question field and what the kid puts in the prompt field. So that, that they just need, we just need to teach them to be careful. Like, hey, like any other field online, you don't put private stuff up there. That's so where I even, think we are, yeah. yeah. And even I, I think, although it seems very generic to be reading off their terms of service and their sort of relatively short safety articles, and their, uh, um, it suggests that if you're running it through an, an, uh, an API, they're not even scrubbing or capturing the right. input from the fields. Um, right. It's a really a hands-off relationship. They're providing you with their output, their natural language responses based on your input. But in theory, from what they say in their documentation, such as it is, they're not using that the way they would if you just go in because you register with OpenAI and so forth. That's a, you know, as you can imagine, of course, that would be a very different experience if you're gonna go use the Bing browser and sort of log yourself in or use Bard and use all of your Google credentials. Or, or, a, teacher tell, or a teacher tell a class to do that, right? So, That's so, right. so yeah. what I wanna, it's, so it's sort of like the safety question flip for me. Like, I think what we're doing actually keeps kids safer. <laughs> using this yeah. stuff than, than, than other ways of doing it. And I'm going to make you walk back. Um, okay, sure. You're talking a language that maybe everybody else understands, but I'm not sure I do. Okay. So you're suggesting that doing this through now comment is safer because now comment is the API. Is that correct? So the API is the key that connects us to open AI. Right. right. And, and what that does is it allows us to control the data, right? So we control the data, OpenAI does not control the data. Right, and so, you're doing yeah. that by doing it through now comment, is that correct? Yes, or okay. or any other, I mean, when we do it through Youth Voices, same deal. Okay, so, but that's, okay, that's important to underscore when you talk to the students, you know, that you're gonna talk to the, uh, the future residents so that they understand there's a real difference between going at this from now comment or youth voices these, uh, instead of going at it through some of these other more public sources, okay? Yes, um, so now Dan Dorenberg and a couple of people he checked with said, yeah, but look what's happening in Italy, look what's happening in, you know, that, that, so there are problems with all this. And they could change their terms of service anytime they want, I guess. But I can't worry about that, right? I mean, I, I don't think we can. We can't worry about them getting evil in the future. But is that? I think that's at least fair to say. Um, so yeah. Now, when when are if to explain this? Uh, when do you think? I don't know. I I think we. Yeah. Go ahead. I have a, I have a related question, Paul. When people when when people the theory that someone's going to a student might write, I'm, I've been abused in a entry to a large language model. Right. Is there, are there, are there just, uh, are there social well, the, he, classroom norms in no, no, in no comment settings that are keeping students from going there just by virtue of the intimacy and the connection between the student and the teacher and the larger community? Or is there anything in a no comment, excuse me, a now comment terms of service that you've got that speaks to that scenario already? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, but yes, we we do need to look at the terms of service again and get 
the fact that we're using OpenAI into the terms of service. And so, yeah, we're mm -hmm. working on that. Um, worth noting that most most people who use now common do not do, are not educators, <laughs> right? right. Um, Already, and eighty percent of people who use now comment don't use it publicly; they use it privately. So mm -hmm. that 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 changes some of the formula about where you were going there. I think a little bit. But, well, uh, yeah. I'm yeah. using it as a closed loop. Um, now comment just with my class. Can I still use the open AI piece of it? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, well, I, I think so, but we, that's something we can start rethinking the design on. Right. So I, I'm sorry to jump you all into this, but this is where we No, this is, well, I get, this is, this yeah. is really interesting because these, this is, this is the gist of it. I mean, we've only just begun to try to experience what's going on all these feedback loops are happening with federal agencies and people are starting to pay attention to the macro issues you're talking about. So it's going to manifest itself yeah. everywhere, just as it is right now in this, in this setting. So it's, okay, it's a thorny sure. thing, but you know, I don't think you should okay. shy away from it. Christina, you, know? you were going to jump in. What's up? I just was wondering if um, you've ever talked to your developers about doing what we did with writing our future, where you have a code, for students so that you're actually not collecting under 18 data or by you data, know. you mean email addresses, email addresses. Yeah. Yeah. You can absolutely do that. That's not hard. That's that's existed now comment almost forever. Because um, I mean, on that level of like, you know, can, should you be worried about them turning evil? Like, yeah, maybe we should, you know, like, I, like I, well, what, uh, my, that would, that would yeah. be one way to think about it, right? Like that would be one. So everybody, any teacher or anybody who wants to register people without email addresses, it's it's easy to do. It's real simple. It's already set up that way. Oh yeah, it has been forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've only set up just, people with email addresses, so I'd love to learn how to do that. Okay, I Is mean, you you can just search in the how to, but I can show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, happy. Good, happy. Good. Um, yeah, they, they solved that long before I was there, <laughs> but, um, I, it's, it's just, it's just a pain because, you know, kids do get in schools do get like notifications when you don't get notifications. Anymore. You don't get notifications. Right. So, yeah. I can. So you do, you do lose that benefit. Um, so Paul, what's yeah, you I do? mean, but yeah, so you... maybe the, maybe there would be a page that would emphasize that, right? Like, hey, we're using OpenAI, and maybe you want to stop using email address. That would be, you know, happy to do that kind of thing. So we need to think that through, um, or continue to. Uh, the, the other thing that we've thought that we can do is per document, um, we're going to leave it. We're thinking that. Give me feedback on this, but we've gone in, in different directions, but. We're thinking that per document, the owner of the document could turn the AI off, right? Mm -hmm. So they could say, hey, I don't want to use AI here. Let me turn this off. Yes, yes. We're, but it would be an opt out, not an opt in, is what we're, we're thinking. Um, mm -hmm. But so mm -hmm. there is that. Now, that doesn't help you as a user, right? But it does help you as a document owner um, to decide to not use it for that document. That's not implemented yet, but that's what we're thinking. Further thoughts, ideas, worries? <laughs> Just, so, um, Paul, if there was yeah. the opt-out option, would that give the teacher control or not if, if the student was the one who is creating the document? Uh, no. The teacher doesn't have control. The, the owner of the document has control. Okay. So then we're circling back to the whole issue of, you know, um, how to make sure that students, you know, have, that teachers have some level of control or um, that somehow students are protected in this process because they're minors, right? Yeah, but I, I think they are already pretty protected um, okay. currently as things are currently set up. Right. Yeah. Even even though the AI is a brand new what? piece of it, okay? Yeah, 
I, I mean, I'm, yeah, I think it's the AI is not a firewall, <laughs> but, you know, and, 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 you know, there, there are suggestions of figuring out those kinds of safety features and maybe we can, but it's relatively safe is what I would say for, for youth to use AI in this format. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Do we want to move from this to do we want to go back to the first question? <laughs> you can keep thinking about which was what that's a really good question. The, yeah. the first that's a really good question. I mean that's that is a really good question. I mean <laughs> I mean, how do you I mean this is interesting. How do you if you have a way you want to go about having a conversation with the four of us about that? I mean, I think we well, each I'll have tell, I'll tell you, about why. Yeah. You do. I'll tell you how I started, and, and I just, uh -huh. I, I just say, like I wasn't expecting it. So I, I just said, I just said, look, the way we started thinking about this was with Deborah, Deborah Appleman's lenses, right, and um, literary lenses, and we have teachers already who teach kids how to be a Marxist on Malcolm, right, <laughs> and 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 it's it's kind of a, a hard process to teach first what the literary lens is about, how it works and all of that, you know, like that whole process, right? And then to, to teach them how to read and then to remember that stuff you learned about what a Marxist is, right? And then, right, so, so what we thought was, hey, what if we could just have AI do it and then break it down? Like, what is this thing that, that just happened here, right? So that was... So the idea is that it's a way of, it's a way of practicing, I, I keep using the word and I will, emergent AI literacy, right? Um, as, a, as a way of learning, which is an inductive way of learning something as opposed to the more instructional or deductive ways of learning. Um, and he just said, oh, so you're teaching kids how to learn inductively, that's the problem? I'm like, yeah, okay, I guess. But, so yeah, I mean, I, I can also quote Jill or the, t the teacher with the eighth graders who says that she's also excited about it because she thinks it will expand their their reading and make them love reading more and you know take them out of the text and then back into the text and that whole process is exciting to her. So that's where I am. What Nikki, you barely know what we're, or you may know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. But David, do you want to comment on that? And I'll, I'll bring, I'll bring my screen up and show you a few other things that we're doing here. And then we can keep talking about this question. If is that sound right? Well, it's very, you know, I think okay. it's really interesting just as a participant or listener to just hear what your thinking is. And I'm sure, I mean, here with Christina and you guys are thinking and Nikki, what you're thinking. I mean, it's a real, I felt like, um, I mean, having spent a lot of time doing student voice and technology and relying on my experience in the classroom as a teacher of writing, which was the beginning of my career, to find technology being another mode and a modality for addressing student voice and building agency and the literacies that go underneath that. I was kind of floored by the experience of having natural language computationally generated so quickly and so completely. Uh, and I really wasn't paying attention to the um, decades of AI research that preceded this, and that stuff is starting to surface. So I was, on the one hand, excited and kind of shocked and intimidated by the pace at which this stuff has over overwhelmed us. I was interested in the fact that it presents you with a fully formed idea, so you're already in conversation with 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 knowledge coming from somewhere, and the questions of whether you're able to interrogate it or you're, you're inspired by it as immediate. And then secondly, so there's a kind of wonder about the engagement with content and knowledge that's suddenly in your face in a way that is not when you're assembling multimedia and a timeline, say with video or working over a Photoshop file, or even working by the pencil or even in a Word doc through drafting, which can be a pretty rote, kind of there are steps you do to it, you, the steps you do. It's very immediate. The pace of it really kind of intimidated and, and excited me. But secondly, it was once again that question of 
here's another literacy, here's another workforce learning question, here's another way that many people are going to be left behind or are going to be utterly confused and mm -hmm. misinformed by this tech. How do we develop our own understanding of its utility? How do we inspire ourselves and kids and, and colleagues in their engagement with it so that we can really be fluent in what it means? So that's a big answer. But on the one hand, it was wonder. On the other hand, it was concern about once again, people are going to be left behind and how the tech will dictate how we operate with it. What can we do to get ourselves um, in front of it and really engaging with it? And, you know, at some level, that's a, re that's a rerun of the STEM pipeline conversation. But those were the things that were motivating me and still do. I, that's really articulate, I think. And I, I, I will echo a piece of that, which is that Bonnie Bentham um, in Philadelphia is like, I got to get my kids, I can't let them behind, right? So I think they're going to be teachers who's, who, are, who are saying, I want my kids doing AI because they're going to need it, right? So I think there, right. there, are, there, there is a cohort of teachers who are going to see it that way. Um, and then this, yeah. so this gives them a, a way to a way in, right? That is safe yeah. and, and does a lot of interesting things, I think, too. But I have a related follow up for Christina. Um, <laughs> hey, Christina, it always has been so impressive and inspiring to see the way the NWP has responded to digital, the digital medium, right? You guys have gone, you've shed your skin several times and always remained at the front of this conversation in a way which is you know, not obvious for people who spend time thinking about writing, and yet this thing comes up again. And that was kind of one of my questions I put to Elise in an email back, I don't know, maybe in early December, when this kind of hit. And I said, how is the NWP going to think about this now? I was just, I hadn't spoken to her or been in touch with the NWP since way before the pandemic. And it was kind of riveting to think, oh, this is what's going to give me an occasion to reach out again. And now I'm in conversation with Paul and others. But you've been watching this and you've done stuff with Kegel and the chatbot and a whole host of things. You've been kind of working on this. How does this, from yourself as a thinker, learner, teacher, and also as an NWP person, what's, where do you land on this? How does the NWP sit with it? Where, where does this, is it, what's the urgency or is it, what's the word for it? Well, I'm not sure if I can speak for the NWP as a whole, but I do think that there's like a, <clears throat> a sense of the, you know, I don't know. I think there's an inherent question, like what does it mean to write and to teach writing when like this kind of composition can happen so spontaneously, right? So yeah. so it gets to some core questions of like, what are we doing and why are we doing it? Just like, you yeah. know, which which I think are interesting questions and, and, and push in, important ways, like just thinking about like a, a, a grad student I'm working with right now, like sh she's confronting this because it's like she teaches in a very methodical way. <laughs> and so she's, I don't know. I mean, I just, it's confronting and, and I think it's interesting. I personally find it fascinating that like AI can pick up on voice, like the, the AI can pick up on like, yeah. the the voice of somebody a voice of a writer a voice of in you know and pick and and and, and visual ai can pick up on sort of the you know like being able to pick up on rhetorical moves being able to pick on a pick up on um what what's the like the tone and the cadence of a writer or yeah. in visually that that there there you know you can sort of say like Dolly or like uh, Ringgold mm -hmm. or like, you know, and, and it, it, it can get to an essence, which to me then, then is like, oh, well, what that, so like this idea of voice, you know, it just like, I think clarifies that there, like there is voice and like, how do you get to voice, right? And like, and how, how to, how, so I think those are just sort of fascinating in terms of like the, like what we're doing here, like, for me, there's some immediate obvious that you articulated well, I think media literacy questions. Like this cause stuff can go awry so quickly, so fast. What a mess. <laughs> it will go awry. <laughs> what a mess. And oh, sorry, Paul, you wanna No, no, go ahead. And, 
I thought of something when you said that, but I can hold it. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, like for, for me, I'm also, I'm concerned about media literacy implications and like, how do we get in front of that? You know, so yeah. that seems like an important piece. But then, um, sorry, I'm going long. What was my... No, no, it's it's great. Yeah. There's... Um, you were talking about voice and then you you were shifting into the media literacy concern and the spontaneity and the yeah. essence. That, well, hmm. I was, I'm really excited by... Like my take on what you're doing, Paul, I guess mm -hmm. just to come back to that actual question. Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. We, um, were, we were talking about you, so it's good you're here. <laughs> she Go heard ahead. us. Yes. <laughs> so um, what I come to, Paul, like for me, the like thinking partner thing is very provocative. Mm -hmm. And like oh. to have like a sort of Marxist robot you can go to to like play <laughs> with being a Marxist or play with being a you know yeah. feminist or be a queer theorist or whatever like that's I, so I, anyway I have to say Paul really captured my attention with the lenses piece and so now and now comment this is like a whole another level that I never would have thought about and I'm like still not sure I have my head around it but anyway I just like the lenses thing, I think is really fascinating in that sort of like, why would you want a robot <laughs> to talk to? You? Right. Right. Let's let's uh, get into some nitty gritty. Is that okay? Or did David? Did you want to keep it at where you? No, know? no, that's fine. <laughs> um, and and Bonnie, um, welcome. Um, you're you're muted, by the way. So we didn't hear you say hello. If you said hello, you I go. didn't. Hello, everyone. Hi, Bonnie. Cool, cool. So, uh, I, I let me let let me do it this way. I want to I I want to show uh, Christina your hands. Oh, you're just waving. Sorry. Okay. So, um, I was trying to wave, but I didn't see the wave emoji. Sorry. Go. No, that's fine. Um, so, um, I'm sharing my screen right now. Um, and you guys, it, th those of you who who got in or can get in, can go in and play alongside and or just watch. Um, However you want to handle it. Um, one of the things, let me just, uh, this was now a few weeks ago, maybe, but one of the things that Bonnie su suggested we do right at the end of one of one of these TTPs was to create something we called a, and I'm going to the library right now. I, we ended up calling it a text rendee. Um, and Bonnie, do you want to tell us what, a te what text rendering is as this is circling around? So text rendering is you take a piece of text that you're reading. It can be a short story. It can be a poem. It can be um, informational text. Um, you ask the audience, your readers, to choose one word from the text for whatever reason they want. You ask them to choose a phrase. Usually I have to explain to students what a phrase is because, you know, the fragment, sentence fragments, we kill them on that. So they have no concept of phrases. And then um, one sentence, they choose one sentence. So, so they have three pieces from the text. And then you sit it to the side, but you give them a purpose to use those words in their own writing. Right, and, mm -hmm. and what, what you were telling us they do is they, I think it was six line. Six line poem, so it's using. Using the senses, is mm -hmm. that, okay. So, um, and um, Nikki, uh, it may be new to this page that I'm showing you right now, but this is some of the ones that we've messed around with so far. Um, still some design on this page that we're working on, but uh, let, me just, let me just go to text Rendy and through it took it took quite some time to get from where we ended up to where this is now um just and the time it takes is okay it's not it's giving me a poem but it's not using the senses or it's giving me a poem but it's not giving me the the sentence the, the right so getting that right is is what we're trying to achieve in the prompt right and this is just to show i'll start at this end this time um just to to show you now, there is a short description that goes in, and there's a um, tool, you know, tooltip thing that you can cross, and you can see what this, what the um, 
partner is trying to do, right? You'll see that in a second. But so this is what it ended up with. I just say, answer the question uh, about the text, um, creating three sections. There's a list. The list has one word, one sentence phrase, right? Um, and, then it, and then it writes a poem using the senses. Lots of exploration with listing the senses, defining the senses. Mm. It, it was just too much. It couldn't do. It couldn't do like both the list at the beginning and then this, anyway. And then at the end, it, it invites you to write your own, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But that's good though, Paul. That it really couldn't wrap itself around because that is a selling point for young people and anybody who thinks that AI is the answer and it just can do all things and they don't have to think anymore. So I, I'm, you know, <laughs> because making students do that, it does push them to really think a lot to create that by using other people's words and their own and make meaning and all of that. So that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, and as we begin to release this and talk about this tool that's on now comment, that part of it, which is, you know, it's, it's as, as I said in my notes toward tonight's conversation, it's, I think it's a relatively easy on ramp to, to um, prompt engineering, right? Mm -hmm. Cause we're starting to get youth to see that they could create this thing, right? that does that um just to, just to, to keep you tuned um no but um we made a tiktok or two which we'll we'll try to get to but um i'm sure oh, they to, will love that i mean you know um, that's right up the children's alley right but let's let me try to find um yeah let, let me just try to do it um okay. and so I just find a paragraph that's not all cluttered with experiments so far so we'll just use this this paragraph 50 here. So what here's what happens. And Nikki, I'm showing this to you mainly, but anyway. So because there are a couple of new features here. Notice, notice that so now when I go across a curious feminist, do you see the pop-up box? Yes. Okay, good. So it it's it, a reader can then kind of get some sense of what that curious feminist is trying to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So that that's a Brand okay, walk, walk me back a step. So yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is an article. Yeah. That it's, you, it's a it's a pretty difficult article. It's it's a, it's, you a philosophical article. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that we okay. posted on now comment. That's right. Okay, and then what you're Thank doing? Thank you for keeping us walking back. Okay, yeah. And then what you're asking the students to do is to apply a specific lens. Yes, and we're we're calling them thinking partners. Okay. The lenses are thinking yes. partners. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I click on paragraph 50. I come over here and I open the AI um, icon. And I'm going to choose the text rendee, right? Which, let me, let me make sure that works. Just So I clicked on the AI. I'm choosing text. Oh, you, you can't. Can you see the? We can see it. It oh, chose it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know, but can you see the drop down? Oh no! If you're okay. dropping so, down, um, we can't see that. Okay, I yeah, you know, that's a that's a, anyway, it's a Kuma space issue, which I, I will talk to them about. But um, the you can you you can see the 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 tooltip as well, so you can see what the, oh what the hell is a text rendy? You can kind of look at it. Okay, so I've t I've chosen that. Now I'm going to say um, I don't see the tooltip here. No. Uh, you have to wait a second. It's over to the right. It's not real obvious, but should pop Nothing up. Nothing pops up. I just no. want you to know that here we don't. So when you hovered no. over Curious Feminist, something popped mm. up, and I'm not seeing that when you. It's not in the pop-up box. Pop-up box can't, maybe can't appear in a pop-up box. Yeah. OK, I'll, anyway. yeah, I'll look. Yeah, OK. Um, no, thank you. Um, so we're just going to, uh, this question would be, um, and thinking about the safety stuff earlier, um, this is the place where information is being sent to OpenAI. We just have to trust that they're not keeping it, right? But I, I, 
we know that they say they are not using it. Um, this I, is a burning yeah. question for me. I'm sorry. Yeah, go Do ahead. Do you have to put anything in that question box? Mm. If I just hit text Randy and you have, to, you have to, I, I, work, I right? don't, I've never tried that. <laughs> um, I, um, we should try that. Mm -hmm. well, here, here, I'll do it right now. Nope. Yeah, you got to fill it in. You got to have something there. Um, now, can say I say dystopia because that level of text that you're writing, you know, it can be set up for dystopian something. So just okay. put in oh, the right. word. Yeah, yeah. How do you spell it? D I don't know. <laughs> Uh, give me something. Pistopian. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll mm -hmm. just do that. Um, so, and I guess I can talk while I'm, I'm hitting this. The um, and, uh, a quick aside. Uh, a teacher last week said, and then a, an eighth grader said the same thing the next day to me, which was. Could you create a, um, or could we create a um, a partner that is actually a tutor who knows me, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and and then can help me, at, given their knowledge of me, can help me understand the text. I'm like that's such an interesting right? thing. That's so beautifully transparent of a kid wanting to have a. I know Trusted it's like friend. a real a real yeah. tutor, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so lots of, lots of lots of back and forth and thinking about this, but but what we did test and we can uh, there is now one that's called a um, a uh, text to self to mm -hmm. uh, mentor. I think um, what you have to do, and this is this then gets to the safety question, <laughs> is you have to yeah. you have to give the um you have to give the ai some information about yourself and right. if you if you do that like if you describe hey i was raised as an evangelical christian and mm -hmm. and a white house and i don't know what any of this has to do with this mississippi southern black stuff right mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading long division um and which is exactly what i did mm -hmm. um it will relate the text to the the bio you put in there, which is interesting, right? Um, but just just worth saying. Um, okay, sorry, <laughs> not sorry, but there's lots of offs and ons. So here's what it does. Here's what the text three Rendy does. Um, and is it doing it, Paul, just for that first highlighted paragraph? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's it's for what, either a paragraph or a sentence. Okay. And that is a, a limitation or, you know, the limitation can be a good thing, right? But absolutely. But it, but right now, and I think it's worth understanding, it's a, it's a, it's a limitation of the models that we have. They can't take so much text, right? Mm -hmm. They wouldn't be able to take the whole mm -hmm. essay. Mm -hmm. I got it. Um, okay. Right. Um, so, okay. So uh, we have a, we have the word Aristotle. We have a sentence. An Aristotle's view of human beings, right? And we have a phrase, not living phenomena. Um, then there's a poem. Do, do you want to read the poem? <laughs> yes. Good, thank you. Aristotle, thinkers of old, gave us a view of the soul, though it was non living phenomenon coming from four material elements <laughs> emerging up powers that stir we seek knowledge search and learn okay and then the your turn oh so what, what it says let's go create a math poem about emergence down to the loom <laughs> let's explore with senses and thoughts to make something beautiful and fraught now it's <laughs> time now it's yours Let's write something truly emergent and pour <laughs> our hearts out on the floor. Well, go ahead, AI, with your bad self. <laughs> and that was just too cute. All right. So whose turn was that? Your turn. It was telling me to do something. Yeah, that's, yeah. I was wondering about that, too. What was yeah. your turn? There you go. 
So <laughs> it's it's you as the user, right? Uh -huh. But it's anybody who comes on this at another time as well. They read they're reading through the comments on the right side, and yeah, it's that's the you. And so I'm supposed to know what a math poem is. You can do whatever you want to. Yeah, you, can do you, want. <laughs> you can do what you want, but I thought that was really cool because that sounds like some crazy stuff that I would do, especially when you're in schools and they say, we're going to do math across the curriculum. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> when, when, when you're in class and 12 kids are doing this, they're going to get 12 different versions of this. Wow. Yeah. Right? So that's already kind of interesting. But then... And and this just happened uh, this morning, so I hope it works. Um, I had Jeremy think about a resubmit button, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we can resubmit this. And when we do, so before we hit resubmit, we can change this to give me something um, hopeful. Mm. I don't know. And we hit resubmit. It then, or you can keep the same question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It then gives you two versions, and it shows you the comparison. That's right. So you oh, can snip your ducky. Now, why we did this was we we want kids to understand that what they're getting back. A, you know, there could be twelve different versions, but B, you could get two different versions and then start thinking about which one you want to use. It, this is yours to mess with, right? Um, also, the, it makes them read, Paul. Yeah, they have yeah, well. to read. You know, so all, all too often with digital devices, they're not reading anything; they're just clicking. So, I, I like that they have to read. So then, I'm gonna just move this along a bit. Select the second one. I'm still not publishing it, but now the second one comes up here. I can kind of look at it more carefully. I can I can edit it. If I don't know what a math thing is, I can go in or whatever. Can I copy and paste it and put it in a Google Doc or somewhere else while it's showing to me? You could do that, yeah. But but I want to emphasize that we can edit it right here, and we did change this title here to say AI result results to edit. But I mean, again, I'm looking at that because of the comparison. If I have two different choices. I might want to look at them outside of a little teeny weeny box. Yeah, and just to say, you can resubmit the second one and get a third version, right? So <laughs> you could go crazy here, but um, but yeah, but I, I want to emphasize that you can edit this, and probably we want to encourage people to edit, and then and then hit submit, and then this comes up over here, right? Mm -hmm. As and then the you here, what does this one say? Now it's your turn. Spin your masterpiece. Melding your senses and ideas from this text, blending it with hope and giving it zest. <laughs> um, you know that's powerful now, Paul. It gave. I think it is. Yeah, and yeah. And, ju and just to mention, just to go through the tool set here, um, you can you can reply with AI here also. So replies can also be AI. Mm. Um, but and and again, we've talked. Uh, Bonnie and I, at least, at least, have talked about how we imagine kids would do this first with their own voices and then come back with the AI. Not necessarily right. So you could, the reply with AI could be to somebody's own human-created text, right? Yeah. As well. Um, let me let me play with one more. <laughs> Bonnie, I got Bonnie's attention. <laughs> You know and, it. And, That's why and, I couldn't miss it, Paul. You know I'm tired and have other work. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to show the background. I'm just going to show you this one. I'm going to use the same paragraph. This time I'm going to choose the fire goober. <laughs> fire. Okay, so I, I probably by now your kids don't use the word fire, but let's let's pretend like the kids in Philadelphia use the word fire to describe something that's really cool. Right, or whatever the word oh, would no, be. Oh, no, that was on fire. Yeah, that was fire. Okay. so mm -hmm. And we played with what the guru word should be, but that's okay. So so I'm going to say what's – I'm going to just say – Oh. I'm just going to say what's up. Mm. 
I'm just going to say what's up. What's up with this paragraph? Okay, um, and if you go back and check the uh, prompt out here, what I asked it to do was I asked it, and Bonnie was pushing me to, or thinking about this. Uh, she she said, "Hey, could it do s slang?" And I'm like, "I don't know." So oh. so here's here's what it does with this bird. It says, "Yo, Yo go ahead, go ahead. Oh, You're come <laughs> on now, yes. <laughs> go ahead, read it. Keep going. You're the better. Oh, reader. you want me to keep going?" Yeah. If you don't mind. No, this is some next level text right here. And we can appreciate the language the author uses in it for all kinds of reasons. For starters, it's extremely informative, breaking down not just the idea of emergence and its history and philosophy, but even citing specific philosophers and a source for further reading. Talk about being thorough. <laughs> oh, I can hear the children reading that. I can hear them. Keep going. Come on. Oh, plus, it really demonstrates the author's knowledge, citing specific works from the philosophers they mentioned to back up their argument. Like, take this section here. <laughs> and that overuse of the word like, which I hate, but that's what they do. Among, you don't have to read the quote. That's okay. Yeah, thank you, because I sure don't know that word. Okay. That's right there. That right there shows <laughs> how the author not only knows the data, but how to profit properly cite it too. So if comic book fans can geek out about a new storyline, why can't <laughs> readers get hype for the language used when we break down the reality or truth of things? Let's reread this paragraph again and appreciate the skill it took to create it. <laughs> Boom. So, okay, I read this, yeah, and I I have not a clue about the content in that paragraph. In other words, that same response could be written to a whole lot of a whole lot of other. So, when you ask the question, what's really going on here? If it was an unsatisfactory, and to me, it's an unsatisfactory response. It's very glorious. The words are lovely, but it's it, it, there's there's no substance here for me. I, I skipped that part though. I think yeah. the substance is in that middle paragraph. No, all they're doing is citing. You know, I I want to. Oh, okay. okay. Um, Paul, then is there? like there is supposed to be with chat GPT, the opportunity to ask different questions to get different results. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So um, I would, so given what you just said, I would want to, if we had more time, I would want to say, um, what do you want it to do with the text, right? So what, what Bonnie and I were trying to do was get kids interested in reading and mm -hmm. care about reading and like go back and reread and like not just surf over and understand why this text matters, right? Mm -hmm. So I think all those things are important. You do too, right? Yeah. But, we, but yes, we could have another coach or sorry, why I can't think that we could have another thinking partner that breaks down the keywords for us and gives us definitions of those keywords. And there is one that does that, right? There could, there, there could be another one that gives us a summary of it. Um, so yes, there are different, different thinking partners could do different things and some of them could explicate the text better, mm -hmm. right? What is I'm that, asking is if, yeah. with this current thinking partner, mm -hmm. if I want to keep, pushing that thinking partner to be a better thinking partner, can I do that? Yeah. So uh, if I hit reply. I think so. That's, I, yeah, I think so. Um, I So that that's the kind of question we need to test. And that's why I need people when you're playing around and testing. Like, I didn't think of that question. That's a great question. And that, yes. Um, but you know, I, I like I like this first iteration, and I understand where Bonnie's coming from. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I'm thinking these kids are still may not have a clue about what that paragraph says, and so we need to ask more questions to help them get a more precise understanding. True. True. 
Um, I, I, I'll. Shall we try? Yeah, and I think it will because really, a you know, just me playing in uh, AI. The more you feed it, the more you dig, the better it's able to understand right. what you're actually mm -hmm. asking mm -hmm. it to do. That's what I'm finding. But it does take time. So I like this resubmission thing mm -hmm. that he put on there because you almost have to do that with right. chat GPT to get what it is you really want. Right, right. So I'm going in a different direction than you're going, but I great. I those are really good questions. Uh, I I do want to show the um, <laughs> just because I'm feeling playful. I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with this paragraph and let's show the uh, blah blah the um, TikTok. So okay. so I'm going to the TikToker. Where is he? Where's and I'm saying, um, I need help to get to get my head. <laughs> now, uh, no. what questions do you ask? Which partners will become an interesting question, right? Mm -hmm. um, just say and and. Oh, and depending on like, is it fiction, poetry, nonfiction, all those are variables here. But I want to ask yeah. each thinking partner the same question and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and, and the problem, not a problem, but the issue is you don't necessarily get the same thing back every time. Right. 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 But so, okay. So this is what it did with this paragraph. And, and I would, be, I would push back a little bit about the understanding of the text because I do think you don't have to like ev understand every word and playing <laughs> with it is a way to get to understand it. But anyway, um, this 45 second vi viral TikTok video starts with a quick pan of ancient of an ancient library filled with scrolls and books illuminated by dozens of lit candles. A soft violin melody plays with text as text appears in the screen, what happens when the parts become more than the whole? The camera <laughs> zooms in and the transitions to a close-up of an ancient text written by a mysterious, unfamiliar symbols. Mm -hmm. As the words flew across the screen, the melody transitions. I, I won't have to continue right here, but, um, but it does end again. A voiceover asks, can you solve the mystery of the emergence? A simple yes or no text appears if the video comes to an end, inviting viewers to leave a comment as their response. Right. Mm. So anyway, I think this is fun. Oh, that's so Wait. Paul, they're not so sophisticated yes. that they're creating the TikTok, right? I, I was expecting I was gonna see a TikTok. <laughs> but I, I know my students could even in my school because yeah. and because of right. cell phones, you know, the students and really for me that brings an understanding of the text, like setting mood, author's mm -hmm. purpose, all these things that they're asking in these doggone standardized texts, tests. Mm -hmm. That is a way, that's a way to hit these doggone standardized test makers too, the doggone rockheads. Hi, <laughs> um, respecting time here. Um, don't know how to end up. Let, can, can I... You gave such eloquent answers, but I, I, I just to say what 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 about about what's and Bonnie, I don't think you heard this. Like, uh, like what's the problem we're trying to solve? Now that you saw this stuff, <laughs> like I love David, your long, eloquent, clear, <laughs> thoughtful answer there. But we're also going to need what in our press release when we release this, we're going to need, <laughs> yeah. So I'll leave you with that question. How about that? <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's a really, it's a really good, it's a really important thing to answer to have the one liner, the elevator pitch, why, 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 why be, why we're engaging with this? Yeah. Well, Paul, what you're doing is demonstrating um, that when you read text, you read it from a number of different perspectives and. Um, to me, that's the elevator pitch, that it helps 
kids understand that there is no one right answer or what, no one correct perspective, but it, it's looking through a number of different, um, I don't want to use the word lenses again, but okay. that's what it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. And for me, it's even though, you know, because in public schools where the children don't have uh, access to a whole lot of things and a whole lot of money, you know, chat GPT is being promoted as their enemy. It's a cheater. And, and because of this, you know, they can know that they are still the smartest person in the room. Exactly. When they come into the room with chat GPT, they are the expert and chat GPT can do nothing without their help. So, you know, to sell that even to young people, because, you know, I know when I was in adolescence, I sure wasn't sure of myself, the decisions I made, the things that I fought, the things that I did. And, and this, you, you get a chance to do over very quickly. How often in my life have I been able to do over, you know, in their ages and even all the way through um, college for children? So, you know, that's the kind of liner I'm thinking, you know, putting the children at the center, the front, the center, and the back. To, to piggyback on that, if I can use a, a number of different thinking partners, I can find the one that works best for me to understand the text. You know, Nikki, the yeah. thing that struck me when Paul walked me through this demo a week or so ago, I was grasping at the idea of kind of an order of operations, like mm. if there were three thinking partners in a lesson, right? And the kids knew they were going to go through each one. Some of them might feel kind of rote, like extracting certain types of words and doing right. more comprehensive based stuff. And others are very playful in terms of interpretation and so mm. forth. And they're very active in their engagement. It gets back to what you're saying, Bonnie, it really puts the kid in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. And they know that each lesson is going to involve some, you know, something that's a little more school-like and others that are very playful and very much about active learning and engagement that might be a kind of model that they get used to in terms of how they use the tech we've watched kids use tech and they develop their own routines for processing images and uploading stuff and this just becomes one more sort of it's a it's a sort of an it's a knowledge assembly routine that they might learn if we thought of mm -hmm. the thinking partners as little scaffolds that they mm -hmm. little equations they used you know mm -hmm. And, I, and that's one thing I really like about what Paul's doing is that mm. it's assembling these building blocks that we might say, I always use these because it gives me X, you know, I don't know, mm -hmm. it'd be interesting to right, see where they right. go. And, yeah. and they're becoming experts in collaboration as well at the yeah. same time, because, you know, all too often in our nation, every man for themselves. And really, as adults, we don't work in isolation. But when do students get to practice that? It's a skill we learn as we grow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, really helpful. I'm doing though, Bonnie, is I'm collaborating with a machine now, right? That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. all right. Because I'm going to come back to you, Nikki, after I get to the through the machine. And then okay. sometimes I might have to look to the left and look to the right and okay. ask you. What should I do next? Okay. Then, just, just, just to throw one twist into that okay. formulation, though, is that if Bonnie has created the 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 partner, and I'm using the partner that Bonnie created, so I'm also collaborating with Bonnie, right? In that way. <laughs> Aww. 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 Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking. He's it's like, a it's a real dog, right? Not a real. It's dog. a real dog. It's not it's not a Chat GPT dog. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. What's the dog's name? Mellow. 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 Uh, Thank you. Does Mellow live Weird. up to its name? No. no. <laughs> Small yappy dog, right? All right. We should let David finish his cooking. Thank you, I've everybody. Up. Thank you for letting me get at it while you were listening to you sure, all. Sure. Nice, okay. nice to be with you. Oh, good, good to, to be with girl. you, David. Sorry and likewise. And one of my last thoughts is that I can't wait to see what kids come up with. Like, I know. I'm ready to do it tomorrow. Well, I can't do it tomorrow, but I'm ready to do it. 
Okay, we got you. We got you. So, um, okay, Paul, you're going to do this with the residents. Um, uh, yeah. And, and sure. let's see what they do with it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so, so like what kinds of partners will they imagine? Right. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't even know. Um, so that, that's kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. So thank you all. All right. Talk to you all soon. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Bye. 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 Bye.